All right, so the England Under-21 team pretty much made a meal of that tournament, didn't they? Christ above, 80 booth, right? What were you doing? Feeding them pints of butter 20 minutes before kickoff? Still though, English players are always heavily price tagged. Let's see what each player would likely be worth if they were sold on now. Angus Gunn, 20 million. When evaluating price tags, you sort of have to take into account about how much their parent club actually values them. Angus Gunn, a 13.5 million signing for Man City last summer, played 12 times last season. If he was sold, I don't think Saints fans would exactly be throwing themselves off the top of London Bridge. I mean, the board would still want their money back and to make a profit off a man who in goalkeeping terms is basically a child. I'd say if they were offered 20 million pounds, they'd take it. Dean Anderson, 20 million. Ah, oh, Dean Anderson, the man who said he wanted to replace David De Gea. And then Gazeta, 4 and 20 minutes against the Romanian under 21s. Let's hope Ali Gunnar Solskjaer didn't watch the game, or I'd be suggesting you start handing out job applications on your local Burger King. Okay, no, that is obviously ridiculous. But the man is actually trying to grab his club by the ball sack, threatening to be paid three times his wage or he'll be off to Real Madrid. To do what? Mop the floors? I don't want to be mean, but I doubt Zidane has been spending the summer digging out footage from Bramall Lane. I think Man United would sell for 20 million quid with half the goddamn fan base gladly seeing the club pocket change for a man they barely knew existed. Freddie Woodman, 15 million. If Freddie Woodman were ever to leave Newcastle, you just know Mike Ashley would squeeze every last penny out of this man's potential. No doubt using his World Cup medal won at under 20 level to add on a few more pennies. Say what you want about Ashley, he knows how to squeeze out every last dime. For Christ's sake, this is the same man who tricked Liverpool into paying 35 million quid for Andy Carroll. Essentially like me giving someone a bag of rocks for about 50 quid. Having spent the last two years playing out the back arse of Scotland, I can see Celtic or Rangers signing for 15 million in a couple of years. Jake Clark Salter, 20 million. This man is the quintessential modern day Chelsea footballer. Possessing a name longer than the Bible, he's also spent last season out on loan at Vitar Sarnhen, i.e. the dumping ground for Chelsea youngsters. He's only 21, but being at Chelsea since 2006, playing one Premier League game for them. The man must have spent last season weeping into a pillow, but with the transfer ban, Chelsea might actually have to start playing him. Considering they, they flogged Nathan Ake, another defensive bench warmer for 20 million quid two years ago, they'd probably somehow be able to get the same for Clark Salter. Jay De Silva, 20 million. Another defender who Chelsea spent the last five years desperately trying to ignore. The man has represented England at every age level, spent last season on loan at Bristol City. I don't actually think he's ever going to get a chance at Stamford Bridge, even with the transfer ban. 20 million, I think. Lloyd Kelly, 15 million. Right, well, Lloyd Kelly just swapped Bristol City for Bournemouth on a £13 million deal last month, so I'm guessing if he was sold, they'd want their damn money back at least. John Joe Kenny, £8 million. This fella's had such a weird career. For such a bang average footballer, his CV now reads Everton, Wigan, Oxford United and Schalke 4 on loan. Let's be honest, Marco Silva needs this man in his back line like he does a case of gentle warts. If someone were to offer £8 million quid, the club would rip their hand off. Ezri Konza, £10 million. This man is a 21-year-old Brentford centre-back. A decent player, he only moved last summer for £2.5 million. Considering he's playing every week for Brentford, I don't think that club would be able to ban much more than 10 million quid for him. Fikeo Tomori, 25 million. The most expensive man on the list so far, and yet another one that Chelsea have shoved under the cupboard under the stairs. I swear, half this squad is just Chelsea youngsters begging to be let out for fresh air. Fikeo Tomori impressed last season at Derby County, and a Frank Lampard guest the gig at Stamford Bridge, he might not sell the Canada born defender for anything other than 25 million. But lad, if you're pinning your hopes of becoming Chelsea's next John Terry, I wouldn't hold your breath. That club neglects youth more often than the goddamn king of pop. Aaron Wambazaka, 60 million. Man United are currently being quoted 60 million quid for Aaron Wambazaka. If you were to judge him solely on his performances in the under 21 tournament, you wouldn't pay half a bag of cheese puffs to sign this man, with the right back morphing into the younger version of Titus Bramble. He is a top talent though, 60 million quid for a right back though. Jesus Christ, soon the tea ladies are going to be moving clubs and multi-million pound deals. Harvey Barnes, 20 million. Now don't get me wrong, Harvey Barnes is an exciting, hard working young talent at Leicester City, but I can easily see him finding himself stuck to the bench within a couple of years. He's a decent player, but no more than 20 million. Hamza Chidori, 20 million. Crisis hasn't been a good 2019 for Hamza Chidori, has it? Two months ago, the man was forced to apologise after some old tweets were discovered, including one that criticised the standard of women's football. If you were going to punish everyone who ever said that on social media, you'd be throwing half the country behind bars. And just last week, the Afro-haired midfielder was forced to apologise to his teammates, not just for his haircut, but for a minus red card that helped them lose to France. And yet, after all this, the 21-year-old is still an exciting talent. I mean, Christ above, if Leicester can extract 35 million quid for Danny Drinkwater, I think they can wean at least 20 million for this fella. Kieran Dowell, 12 million. Having impressed during the second half of last season at Sheffield United, I think Everton will be happy enough to get 12 million quid for this fella. I mean, come on, he's an attacking midfielder. Who is he going to replace? Sigurdsson? Phil Foden, 100 million. The most expensive player in this squad, bar none. The thing is, if you took Phil Foden out of the Man City squad, it would not make one iota of a difference. But don't think for a second that they still wouldn't try to cling on to him for dear life. The man is the club's most exciting talent since Michael Johnson, who eventually went off the rails and drank himself a beer belly the size of his. Croydon. Foden is going to be up there with Jadon Sancho as one of England's best players in a few years. City would not sell for less than 100 million quid, I have no doubt about that. Morgan Gibbs White, 50 million. Morgan Gibbs White is just 19 years old, but already possesses maturity above his peers. His range of passing is superb. He's so relaxed in possession. Wolves have a gem here, 
and they will not sell for less than 50 million. Which just makes me realize that a Wolves bench warmer is worth 50 million quid. I remember when that was a goddamn world record. James Madison, 60 million. Well, let's see. James Madison was bought by Leicester for 20 million last summer. He's now their best player, and after scoring a couple of penalties and diving like a dying swan, he's no doubt worth at least three times the price. Mason Mount, 30 million. To be honest, I don't think Chelsea will sell Mason Mount. I mean, spent the last two seasons out on loan at Vitas and Hem in Derby County. He's essentially completed the first two rights of passage as a Chelsea backup. His next step is no doubt going to be sitting in the stands and twiddling his thumbs for about five years until Chelsea finally remember he exists. Isn't that right, Robin? Ryan Sassignon, 50 million. One of the most valuable players in England, and he's just been relegated. Ryan Sassignon is probably worrying right now. It's been a month since the season's ended, and he's still stuck in the same squad as Cyrus Christie. I mean, to be honest, he's arguably Fulham's most valuable asset of all time. They won't sell the 19 year old for anything less than 50 million. Considering Spurs haven't spent so much as a toenail on the player since 2018, good luck with that one, Ryan. Tammy Abraham, 25 million. It's been three years since Tammy Abraham played for Chelsea. I think it's pretty obvious what the club think of him. If he's expecting them to suddenly believe in him now, now that they've been tossed a transfer embargo, think again, lad. Clearly, the fellas at the top view him as nothing more than a bargaining tool that they'll flog to the championship. Give it a year or two, and I can see him being sold to someone like West Brom or Stoke for about 25 million quid. He is a good player, don't get me wrong. Is he Premier League quality though? Because his end product of Swansea was that of a drowned rat. Dominic Calvert Lewin, 20 million. This man is a decent enough player, definitely useful. A 6 foot 2, he's a handful in the air, but for a striker, he does not score anywhere near enough goals. He's got 17 and 93 games for Everton, for Christ's sake. You don't think they'd cash in if someone was foolish enough to offer 20 million? Damari Gray, 35 million. Damari Gray is a good player. You might wonder why he's still getting dragged out for under 21 duty when he's nearly 23. Price to Bob, it's like that 40 year old who keeps repeating his GCSEs. He is an exciting quick winger for Leicester, although the lad needs to work on his end product. 10 goals in 132 games is a pathetic return for a winger. Would still be worth about 35 million quid though. Reese Nelson, 40 million. I'll be honest, I haven't seen much of Reese Nelson, but the way Arsenal fans talk about him, you'd swear he was the second coming of Christ. Having scored 7 goals on loan at Hoffenheim last season, the 19 year old returns to Arsenal, no doubt hoping to break into the first team and trade it as an audition to no doubt sign for Man City next summer. Dominic Solanke, 3 bags of crisps and a half eaten sandwich. This man has the first touch of an elephant, the ball control of a dead giraffe. How on earth has he tricked 3 Premier League clubs into giving him the time of day? No, how did he trick Bournemouth? and chucking 20 million quid at his head. How was he given a full debut at international level? Am I missing something? Does he just have the best agent in world football or something? Because all I can see is a man who couldn't score at a Megalove nightclub. I would pay about three bags of crisps and a half-eaten sandwich. Although, to be honest, after spending 20 minutes watching him trip over the ball, I'd be demanding the sandwich back. Anyway, that squad is roughly worth 675 million, three bags of crisps and a half-eaten sandwich. Did it look like a 700 million pound squad when they were getting dragged about the park by a bunch of Romanian nobodies? Prices of English footballers in a nutshell.